last season. Ohio State returns 14 starters from last season, including eight on defense. Coach, you might have an opening statement. Take questions. Thanks for being here today. It's an honor to represent Ohio State and uh, as we start our 14 journey, 2014 journey. Um, it was very Good summer because we were able to spend time with our players. It's the first time we've been allowed to, I believe we had six or eight sessions with our players, and uh, it will also helped in the transition of our high school guys when they showed up in June. So it's been a very good summer. Our quarterback, you know, we're going to ask that question, he's ready to go. He's full speed, in the best shape of his life. Uh, we have a good bunch of good young players that we're anxious to see what they can do. The two areas of concern the offense line is number one. A little disappointed what happened in the spring. We just didn't see the growth that we uh, would like to see. However, I really admire our coach, Coach Warner, and I know we have good players, so they've had a very good summer. The second area is pass defense. We completely have uh, blown up and started from scratch, an area that we were not very strong in pass defense. And Chris Ash has uh, done an admirable job of installing a brand new pass defense that we're going to uh, test. And, See how that goes during training camp. Went very well during the spring. So, a uh, very good group of young people that I look forward to working with. And we start, to, uh, they come in on Sunday for good and we uh, start practice Monday. Okay, this time we'll open for questions. We'll start here on the left side, our, our left side of the coach. Joe Rabin, what's your name? Hi, Coach Dave Little from Funfest.com. Can you talk more about the offensive line? You mentioned it's a concern. Uh, do you think Chad Lindsay will definitely be your starting center? Just talk about the offensive line as a whole, if you would. Well, Jacoby Boren's right in the middle of that. So is Chad Lindsay. And there's a kid named Billy Price that was very tricky here. Though three, uh, three guys that uh, are talented. Uh, Chad is all I know of what I've seen. He's a tough guy. He's a hard worker. And he has a lot of experience with open. That's why we took him. Normally, we don't get involved in those type of things. But we, uh, we needed some maturity in that center that offensive line, so um, it remains to be seen. Uh, I like, I kind of like the work ethic. I think they're hungry, and uh, you know, the fact that spring did, you know, I, I wanted to see a little more growth, and so I, it's, it's easy to coach hard, and we can coach them real hard all the way through, so uh, I'm sure that we'll know more obviously in a couple weeks. Stay on the center there, Coach. Right down front. How stacked is the East Division, and what are your thoughts on, on getting through that division? East Division is very strong. You know, I, uh, um, you know, as we get closer to the season, I'm looking at that schedule. There's a, there's a tough run. We have two very tough, uh, three very tough road games. But the East is strong. Um, you know, I've learned a long time ago from George Cannon, and that's certainly not scheduling. It's certainly not uh, losing the East and losing the other side. So, but very strong conference. Um, you can tell by the recruiting tool on that side. It's very good recruiting to be going on. So, that's going to be challenging. Stay on that side of the room, just bring it to go. <coughs> Patrick Hunter from the Warriors. Uh, Urban, you've long lamented right. okay. you've long lamented the you know, production and depth of the linebacker. What have you seen out of the group so far this summer? One of our stronger groups, you know, we, we operate under the unit principal and it's power the unit, nine units. And, uh, uh, they were uh, the last two years they weren't you know, what we expect. Actually two years ago not bad, but we have any time in, in, in division one. Upper level football, and move a fullback to the middle linebacker, you get a problem. And we have a uh, Zach Horn does a very good job. Now we're, you know, I'm used to hearing about Larry Angus and AJ Hawks and those guys. And we weren't at that level. Ryan Shazir played excellent last year. Uh, however, it's the best the group's been right now. And that's just as far as chemistry, as far as trust, as far as uh, operating as a unit, and it's an interesting play. Uh, we also have some very good typical. Three freshmen are there, Dante Booker, uh, Raekwon McMillan, Kyle Berger, and uh, Sam Hubbard. We're not, we might move back to uh, tight end or the linebacker. Then we have some very good Josh Perry's done a great job of leadership, and so is Curtis Graham. So uh, it's, it's about time we play linebacker ball, linebacker play the way Kyle State's used to. I think we're going to see this year. Coach Graham, the other side of the room, stage right toward the back. Um, your president, Michael Drake, took the office on June 30th. Have you talked to him much, and how does the presidential change impact your job as a football coach? I'm sorry. I couldn't really hear Can that. Can you repeat that, Kevin? Yeah. Uh, Michael Drake took office on June 30th. How does the presidential change impact your job as a football coach? Uh, we, we spoke briefly uh, on several occasions. Uh, I invited uh, President Drake to come visit with our team. I'm looking forward to do that. Uh, 
put on his background. I had many conversations with some administrators in our, uh, in our university, so it really doesn't impact uh, how I do my job, I don't think. So we just take care of business. But I look forward to spending a lot of time. Coach, next question is going to be on our left down here in the middle of the room. Coach Seth Brown from the Chicago Sun Times. What did your team learn last year from kind of being on to grant that's something that you can go to Ohio State to play for? And is that something you specifically address in training camp? Well, I, I will probably. Uh, you know, you, you played Ohio State, and it's, uh, they're hunting because of Ohio State. Ohio State's uh, traditionally been a very strong program. Uh, you know, we won a nice run last year. Uh, but that's, we don't spend much time on that. You know, there's great storylines about it. This and that, but it's all about execution and getting our team ready to go. We spend an inordinate amount of time on leadership building, and we call it brotherhood trust. That's what we're, the focus is. It's, it's excellent. Uh, the two sessions we put our players through, so that, that's our focus. Next question, Coach, is on our right here on the aisle. Todd Porter from the Camp Repository. Urban, I know you said that Braxton is in the best shape of his career, but he was hurt at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season. How concerning is it that the offensive line isn't where you would like it to be after spring? And how focused will August, how much time will you spend in August making sure that you get a group together that can protect you know, the franchise? Concern number one, I mean, that's it. But, uh, there's, there's a bunch of concerns you always have to say through F, through Z, through X, whatever it is. Uh, but the list, the, the number one on the list is the development of that offensive line for the reasons you just said, among many other things. One win that game with protection of protecting our quarterback is paramount. So that's that's uh, work, uh, I don't want to say all our focus, but a lot of our focus is right now. Coach, we're moving back to our left, four rows deep here in the front. Urban Doug Lamarie from Cleveland.com. Is there any update on the Tracy Sprinkle situation and overall with your team? How did you think they handled themselves off the field since you guys last played the Orange Bowl? Uh, pretty good. Tracy Sprinkle is no longer with the program. I will readdress it if there's some changes. That's all I know. That's the way we handle our situation. If something happens, especially if you're in the series, you just remove from the program and evaluate at the appropriate time. So uh, at this time, it's no longer part of the program. Stay on that side of the room all the way against the wall in front. Bill Lillies and Cleveland Blaine Urban without Carlos High. Looking to can you afford to look to try to cut back practice to rushing attempts? Or is it something in your mind? I think we're going to try to not think. We have to be much more balanced than we've been. You know, the, everyone's looking for a 50 50 ratio. We've been close a few times, and Alex Smith was our quarterback. We're pretty close to 50 50. Uh, with Chris Lee, I want to say we're pretty close. With Tim, uh, we were pretty close to, I think, 60 40, 65. Braxton, the last couple of years, especially last year, Carlos was so good, the offense line was so good, and we're still trying to develop that receiving core to be on par with the rest of the team. I think we have. I'll be disappointed if the receivers are not now ready to carry their own weight. Because the first year they weren't, they just weren't very good. Second year got much better. Uh, Philly Brown had an excellent year. Evan Spencer really developed. Evan Smith keeps coming on. Um, I, I really like our two tight ends. Jeff Ironman and Nick Finance, so we're, we're really starting to improve the surrounding cast around Braxton. So I'm hoping, not hoping, we have to be. That's, that's where we're going to pick up those yards. We're getting the hands of Dontre Wilson, Paul Marshall, uh, and uh, the outside receivers as well. We'll stay in the same area for next question. Yeah, Urban, despite the fact that what you're doing with the offensive line rebuilding, the guys are replacing on defense, most projections around the country. I think Cleveland.com had a uh, poll the other day that said you guys are favorite going to Big Ten. Some people think you get that playoff. What has to happen between now and November for that to happen for you guys? Are you comfortable with those projections? Well, there's very variables. That, uh, you know, the injury, obviously, injury is number one. Uh, chemistry, I shouldn't say the chemistry and trust and development of young players is by far uh, number one. And that's, I can't think of put more time and effort into number one development of our coaching staff. Some leadership training from our coach, for our coaches for about five weeks, and then we carried it right over to the players. For about an eight-week session that we had with our players, so the amount of time on the most important element of any team is the, the trust within the team, the trust with 
the leader of the team, which is the coaching staff. Uh, then number two is going to be injuries. If we can stay healthy, I think we're very good uh, to develop the offense like that. So, uh, Tim, I think you know me very well that there's zero conversation about uh, tomorrow or November. Uh, we're just trying to get the training camp healthy and the right frame of mind and then have the best training camp we've ever had. We'll shift all the way to too hard, right on the other side of the room here against the wall. Uh, Coach Del Yates, WLS Radio here in Chicago. How big of an improvement has Dontrell Wilson made from the bowl game to this point right now? And how big of a role and how important is he going to be in your offense this season? A great question. He'll be easy to pack guy. Last year he was a hybrid guy that really wasn't great. He uh, had potential, but he was very little. Couldn't block uh, at the level we expected him to. Was not quite strong enough to run inside like he needed a hybrid guy to do. Uh, simply an outside running player. Uh, he's gained the weight, he's much stronger, he's much uh, more prepared for uh, this level of football. He's always had the talent, he's always had the effort. So he will be a, uh, he's an impact guy for us in a lot of ways. We'll move here on our left on the aisle. Coach, a lot of the other coaches in the East have been talking about the toughness and the physicality of, of that division. Can you just touch on that and how do you think, you know, that, you know, characteristic in your division is going to either help you guys or, you know, whatever may be this season? I think it's one of the toughest divisions in college football. You know, once again, you just have to look at the recruiting that takes place in the schools and the style of defense and all that. I mean, it's a, it's a rugged conference. And so all those comments that you said the other coaches were making, I, I see it. Um, anyway, I'm going to do our best to uh, be prepared for it. Move down here, uh, three rows deep on the island. Hey, Coach, Jamie Gregor with the way. Um, you have one of the most talented defensive lines in the country, most people say. How big was the hire uh, Larry Johnson uh, to replace Michael Grable? And uh, how big has he been throughout the spring coming into the fall? Yeah, we had to, you know, you know we lost the home run. I love Mike Grable, did a great job for us. He was a great Buckeye. Um, hated to see him go. I understood that he was an NFL background, great family. And a very good recruiter for us. So when he left, it's like a player. If you lose a great player and you don't replace him with a great player, you're it's just going to happen. You're not going to be as good. Uh, we replaced him with a uh, top shelf coach. You got that great respect. Very good recruiter, a very good coach. The players love him already. There's an incredible trust in uh, uh, Spree de Corps in the line room right now. So that's, uh, he, he walked into a good situation. He's got a bunch of good guys. Good mix of young and old players in, the, in that room. Back across the room here to our left. Yeah. Uh, Urban Ari wants from Cleveland.com. Um, you just got done saying Braxton's in the best shape of his life. Um, he's had some durability issues during his career. Hey, do you guys have to take any steps to make sure that you ensure that he stays healthy? Any, any special steps and what are some reasonable expectations in your mind from the senior season? Well, I've had some players that have had a little durability issues. <laughs> John Simon had a little durability issues because he went a lot of times above and beyond what the body was telling him to do. So I, I, don't, I love that. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't have the first to tell you that someone just doesn't have to play. Or they're just maybe not tough or so on. But Braxton Miller, you know, his issues are he goes sometimes above and beyond what his body is going to allow him to do. So uh, he's got an incredible. Some of the guys with the, uh, durability issues, the ones I just mentioned, you know, a Tebow, uh, John Simon, Braxton Miller, uh, Christian Bryant, those are guys that have a competitive spirit at the highest possible level. That's all they do is not to go. So do we try to slow Braxton down or, or absolutely not? Uh, we try to protect him, surround him, and maybe come up with a good scheme to get the ball out of his hands maybe a little quicker. Those are all things that we address. It's the durability issue, not because his body wasn't made to play college football. It's because of how hard he plays. You can, you can look around the country, there's guys that just, you know who they are. Every, every program's got a couple of those guys that just play so darn hard. But, uh, sometimes things happen. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Thank you.